for those of you who are unfamiliar with my work, every year I read through every issue of every English language nutrition journal in the world. So busy folks like you don't have to. I then compile the most interesting, most groundbreaking, most practical findings to new videos and articles I upload nearly every day to my nonprofit site, nutritionfacts.org. Everything on the website is free. There are no ads, no corporate sponsorship, strictly non-commercial, not selling anything, just put it up as a public service, as a labor of love, as a tribute to my grandmother, whose own life was saved with evidence-based nutrition. All right, let's get to your questions. All right, should... um, uh, uh, Maria asks, should... uh, EPA, DHA, be 250 milligrams combined or 500 combined was the ratio. Um, uh, so I recommend people consider taking 250 milligrams of preformed uh, pollutant-free DHA, so algae or yeast-based DHA, um, and your body actually ret- uh, converts EPA to DHA and retroconverts um, a DHA to EPA. So, I, uh, so I'm not worried about the EPA as long as you're getting 250 of uh, DHA with or without EPA attached. All right. Raz asks one. I don't know what that means. Maria is back, says, oh, B12 recommendation for kids and toddlers. I have, a, um, I actually did a whole new uh, webinar on B12. If you missed it, um, you can download the whole thing or just wait till the videos come out. But I have a chart that says exactly by age, by weight, everything um, uh, for both weekly or daily dosing. So check that out. Um, Raz is back um, saying, is eggplant underrated? Now, what's the best way to cook it? Um, well, yeah, perhaps so, um, because eggplant contains lots of soluble fiber. That's why it's kind of slimy like okra and oatmeal and flax seeds. Um, and can pull cholesterol out of your body. Uh, that's why soluble fiber-rich foods are featured as part of uh, uh, Dr. David Jenkins' portfolio diet, which I recommend for people who are trying to uh, lower their cholesterol more than just eating a whole food plant-based diet. If that doesn't quite do it, then you have to add foods to your diet that actively pull cholesterol from your body. And one of them are these slimy foods like eggplant. Um, best way to cook, you would have, that's, one of the reasons that uh, I've been doing these new live doctor and dietitian Q and A's with Doctor uh, with uh, dietitian Juliana Hever is for these practical questions like how the best way to cook it. Um, uh, she'd probably be better to answer that. Um, uh, and uh, actually, next month I'm having um, another one of my favorite dietitians, um, Brenda Davis, on um, to offer some uh, practical tips. Um, uh, but in terms of, I can tell you how I cook it. And that's roasting. I don't like eggplant, but I love baba ganoush, which is a kind of a roasted eggplant dip. So you basically make hummus, but you do it with a roasted eggplant. Um, and uh, so it depends if you get the little Japanese eggplants or the big fat ones. Um, you can just roast it under a broiler and it caramelizes and it gets delicious. You just scoop it out, put it in a blender with um, some, either with tahino or, or with uh, sesame seeds. Um, and uh, some lemon juice, and then all sorts of yummy spices, uh, hot sauce, and you are ready to go. And then you dip vegetables in it, um, and it's delicious. It turns takes something which I think is really gross tasting to something that's really delicious. So anyway, that would be my take on that. But I'm sure there's lots of people out there with amazing eggplant recipes that I just don't know about it. Okay, the Giroudi family sends some love. Uh, love back to you, Calum. Um, asks, omelet um, powder with seeds or without? I didn't know there was um, uh, there was such a thing as seeded omelet um, powder. Um, I, 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 uh, all I know is that there's omelet um, powder. I'm not sure if they include the seeds or the peel or not. Good question. Um, all right. Dave Moulton says, uh, you often praise the Ind- Indian diet. Um, has tons of dairy um, in everything. Oh, absolutely. Um, uh, right. So the ghee has boiled um, butter, which is particularly bad because it oxidizes cholesterol. And oxidized cholesterol is even more toxic um, uh, to your arteries than regular cholesterol. And one of the reasons why there's so much uh, cardiomyopathy disease in the Indian subcontinent. Um, uh, and... Uh, 
Yeah, so I, uh, I, I don't know that I've praised the Indian diet, but certainly praised lentils. That's part of the Indian diet. Um, yeah, there's it's just like the Mediterranean diet. There's wonderful things about the Mediterranean diet, greens and it's vegetable focus. But there's some things that are not so great, such as, uh, you know, refined grains and uh, um, added oil, alcohol, etc. Okay. So, uh, yeah. All right. Um, all right. Um, uh, Giotti uh, offers some love. That's wonderful. Back to you. Um, next up um, is Debbie. Is there a test to get the B12, B vitamin info? Well, there's tests for B12 vitamin sufficiency. Do you need to get a B12 test? No, you just take your B12 and, uh, and, uh, because if your test showed that you were low in B12, you take your B12. If your test showed you were high in B12, you still take your B12 since it's critically important for anyone um, eating a uh, eating a, a, a plant-based diet. And so um, if you're not going to change your behavior based on a test, why get the test in the first place? Um, and probably the best test is uh, what's called a urine MMA test, a methylmalonic acid test, simple urine test. Um, and... Uh, um, better than the serum uh, B12 test, the level of B12 in your blood, which uh, it may not be an accurate indicator. Although if it's low, you probably are indeed B12 deficient. But if it's normal or high, it does not necessarily um, uh, useful. Okay. Um, unfortunately, I'd like to go question by question, but they're flooding in so quickly, they actually scroll off my screen. So I'm just going to click randomly like a roulette wheel. Is it roulette wheel? No, slot machine. Um, and we'll just see whatever question pops up. Hopefully there is no um, um, uh, uh, vulgarity or anything because they, I, they are not being, uh, I can't, uh, they're scrolling up too quick. I can't even read them before I click them. So let's just click and see what happens. I click, nothing happened. Okay, here we go, Kyle. No vulgarity, thank you, Kyle. Best foods to eat when recovering from a concussion. Um, do I have any videos on that? Um, I don't think so. There is a, um, there is a video. Oh, I think it's coming up. I forget when it's coming up. I do have a video coming up on post head trauma headaches and what one can do dietary wise. Um, but, uh, yeah, don't know any, um, any uh, dietary intervention for concussion other than uh, treat the cause. In other words, prevent getting concussed in the first place, if, um, however, possible. Wear your, uh, you know, bike helmets, etc. All right, click on another one. Neil says, "Is red wine the best alcohol to choose if you are in the mood for a drink?" Um, so, um, uh, as uh, alcoholic beverages go, um, red wine is indeed uh, the least uh, harmful. Um, so, for example, in the Harvard Nurses Study, found that even light drinking, like uh, less than or up to one drink a day in women, um, was associated with increased risk of breast cancer, number one cancer killer of young women. But red wine appeared to be an exception, did not appear to increase risk. And I think it's because it's actually a compound in the skin of grapes that acts as an aromatase inhibitor, which prevents the, the, the production of estrogen within the body. Um, uh, by, uh, by tumors, um, and, uh, and that may be why um, it's, it appears to be the one alcoholic drink that in, at light drinking is not associated with breast cancer, has not yet been associated with breast cancer risk, um, but I encourage people to reduce their alcohol consumption as much as possible from all sources. But if you are going to do a drink, indeed, red wine um, would, uh, would uh, be the least harmful choice. Uh, so far as we know. Les Sheffield says, hi, hello. Does peanut butter count as a serving of beans? Actually, no, it counts um, uh, as a serving of nuts, even though indeed um, uh, peanuts are legumes. Nutritionally, they're much more similar to nuts. And so that's why there are some things that are nuts that uh, like we call coconuts and chestnuts, we call them nuts, but they're actually nutritionally different from nuts. And so they don't, we don't kind of include them. And there's a lot of things like, uh, you know, when I talk about berries, I'm talking about kind of colloquial definition of berries, not the botanical definition of berries, which, you know, makes like 
I think, you know, like bananas or a berry, things like that, technically, but um, no small edible fruit um, using the colloquial definition. Um, and so, no, peanut butter would count as a serving of nuts in the Daily Dozen, which is a free um, app available on iPhone, Android, Dr. Gerger's Daily Dozen. Um, uh, all the healthiest of healthy foods I encourage people to try to fit into a daily diet. Um, our daily routine. Leanne asks, is it more important for longevity to eat earlier or have a shorter eating window? I have an easier, oh, I wish I could see the rest of this question. Um, uh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, so for longevity, um, window. Okay. So both, so both, um, well, and not necessarily for longevity. I don't know about longevity. That's my next book. I'm going to start it. Um, in January, and I have 14 months to write it, and it'll be out December 2022. Um, but certainly in terms of weight loss and metabolic health, which presumably would go along with longevity, um, eating both shorter, earlier, and within a shorter, uh, early time restricted feeding is the way to go. In terms of his one bet, if I had to choose, uh, I'd probably do the E. Mm, well, I mean, eat, eat early. I mean, I, I would choose, you know, trying to uh, 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 shift more calories towards earlier in the day, if that's what you mean by eat early. That would probably beat out shorter eating window, but uh, I'd want to have both. Okay. Uh, Chris Gamble says, what are my thoughts on, oh, David Sinclair's work. Um, uh, I'm reading his book right now. Uh, David Sinclair is a longevity researcher. I'm writing a book on longevity. I want to read everything there is about longevity. And so uh, reading his book, um, I um, am not familiar with his um, uh, his work on NAD boosters, but I certainly will be after I um, uh, scour the literature on longevity research. But um, so to be continued. All right. Arlene asks, is that powerful honey from... <laughs> New Zealand safe for gut bacteria. I've never heard of a particular honey from New Zealand, powerful or not. Um, I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, Chris says, what are my thoughts? Oh, we did that again. All right. Chris is insistent. Aaron says, do you recommend calcium supplementation during anti-hormonal treatment? Um, uh, not sure if you're talking like uh, kind of like uh, breast cancer treatment. Um but, uh, huh. So I'd have to know more about exactly. So in general, I do not recommend um, calcium supplements. I have two videos. Uh, one is our calcium supplement safe. One is calcium supplements effective. I think after watching both those videos, you'll become convinced that for uh, most people, calcium supplementation is not a good idea. Um, but um, uh, are there certain uh, uh, um, uh, indications? Um, certainly. And I just have to learn a little bit more about your situation. But the the default is no calcium supplementation. We should get calcium um, from the way nature intended, um, uh, which is uh, from low oxalate, dark green, leafy vegetables. That's probably the best source, although there's lots of sources of good, healthy plant-based calcium. Jasmine says, what causes chronic canker sores? I have a bunch of videos on that, although it may not be under canker. You may have to... Well, I'd probably put it under canker. If you go to nutritionfacts.org and type in canker or aphthous ulcers, which is the stupid, fancy, medicalese um, word for um, canker sore, um, I pull up all the research on both preventing um, and treating um, aphthous ulcers. Okay. Oh, someone is just replying to somebody else. Okay. Jasmine. Oh, we already did that one. Um, I guess that's one way to get your question in. If you answer like, tw if you ask like 20 times, the odds that you'll come up with my question slot machine are pretty good. All right. Um, Elishiva um, says, are the nuts and seeds on the daily dozen okay for diabetics trying to reverse diabetes? Absolutely. I would encourage people to include an ounce of a nuts and seeds in the diet, diabetic or not. Um, uh, Jody says, will you be adding more studies on autism? You know, it's interesting. I was excited about my um, whole, my last series on autism, and they were among the most poorly viewed videos on the site. Now, I don't do videos like, oh, I bet this will be really popular. Um, but 
just people did not seem interested in autism on um, dietary prevention treatment. In fact, there's a kind of a blowback um, from uh, people who are like, how dare you consider autism to be abnormal or something to be treated or prevented? Um, and I don't know. So yeah, I, I was excited about it, but they did not land very well. Certainly if something new and exciting comes up, I'll, um, that's, I think, worth putting out there, I'll put it out there. But um, I, unfortunately, people do not share your enthusiasm for autism videos, or at least uh, to my surprise. Um, all right, uh, um, Johnny um, uh, asks uh, a Dr. Greg with lots of G's, what do you think about Dr. Avi and Vegan Gain saying heart disease isn't reversible? Um, I've got a lot of respect for, um, for Avi, um, uh, but I think the, uh, that we've gotten to some semantics here. Um, uh, uh, that's part of the problem. Part of the problem is uh, uh, this is relying on an outdated, uh, in part, oversimplified kind of plumbing model of uh, of heart disease, which if it had any scrap of truth with it, you know, angioplasty would actually save people's lives, right? Opening, physically opening up an artery. In fact, opening up an artery and then sticking a stent in to prop it open, but it doesn't work. It doesn't work for saving people's lives. It doesn't even work for preventing heart attacks. It doesn't even work for symptoms in terms of decreasing angina compared to placebo, compared, compared to sham surgery, compared to fake surgery. Um, it doesn't work. You say, wait a second, you're opening up an artery, increasing blood flow to the heart muscle. How could that not help? I've got a two and a half hour webinar coming up October 14th at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Um, and uh, on the... Um, uh, the effects of statins. So I'm going to go through all the statin research um, and all the stents. Statins and stents, a new webinar just announced today, actually. And you would know that if you are a subscriber at nutritionfacts.org, which is free, like everything else on the site. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that just went out today. Um, and so sign up if you are interested. Lisa Cram says, what are good foods to eat? Ooh, stage five kidney disease. Um, when you have uh, such advanced kidney disease, you really need to talk to a renal dietitian um, um, because um, uh, even uh, foods that would normally be healthy for other people um, uh, may overburden the kidneys because you're relying on one's kidneys' ability to filter the blood. Um, and so talk to a renal dietitian. But in terms of preventing the progression um, uh, to that, to end stages of renal disease, a uh, low protein plant based diet um, is the best. And I've got uh, some new videos coming up on that. Um, Alisa says, What kind of amylo powder do you recommend? Um, uh, whatever you can find that's cheapest. That's how I buy am my amylo powder. Uh, Nikki says, What's the best food for knee? Oh, knee cartilage, health and building. Um, well, uh, I mean, the only vi the videos I have about that is about osteoarthritis, which is uh, which is a uh, a syndrome of cartilage destruction, um, uh, which which tends to uh, predominate in the the uh, knee joints, um, and uh, and so there's uh, so so just type in osteoarthritis, and mo they're probably all about knee um, knee cartilage. And talks about how, you know, traditionally we thought it was kind of a mechanical thing, where it's just because people, obesity is a key risk factor for maybe just putting kind of mechanical wear and tear on the knees. But it turns out you can also get osteoarthritis in non-weight-bearing joints, um, like in your hands, which really isn't taking load. And we used to thought it was non-inflammatory, like um, uh, unlike, you know, rheumatoid arthritis. Um, but now we realize, no, there is a key inflammatory component. So no wonder an anti-inflammatory diet, a whole food plant-based diet, um, uh, uh, maybe beneficial. So check out those videos and I have a few more videos coming up. Christian says, how many eggs would I recommend to eat daily? I would recommend to eat zero eggs. Um, uh, yeah. What are my thoughts about the recent Instagram video from Daniel Bellardo? I uh, talked about the uh, reversal. 
Um, can varicose veins improve with food and can cold sores be prevented? Um, uh, um, cold sores be prevented. Well, um, okay, so varicose veins. Um, I do have a varicose veins video. Um, uh, I forget what it said. Um, oh, was it the varicose? Maybe it was on standing desks. Um, uh, and varicose veins. Yeah. I th mm, oh, you know, you'd have to type in. I know there was one video about it. I forget what it said. Um, that's why I have all my videos up so we can all uh, check back in. It's funny when I do, you know, interviews on topics and they're like, oh, we're doing a documentary on whatever. Guess what I do to prepare? I go to Nutrition Facts and watch my own videos from years, you know, because it's, uh, we started this in, uh, 2011. Um, uh, some of the videos actually date back to 2007, but that was when they were just on like a DVD or VHS actually back then. But the website didn't come up till uh, 2011, but still like 10, almost 10 years ago now. And so I have to watch my own video. So I would have to do that from varicose veins, but I know I do have a video on varicose veins on nutrition facts. Um, and, uh, cold sores, um, separate from, uh, after the ulcers, I don't think I have anything on cold sores. Um, uh, I don't think I have anything in cold sores. I have not run across anything on, uh, well, wait a second. I think because, uh, don't people take lysine for cold sores? And so I think I did a video talking about whether or not lysine, which is a particular amino acid is actually beneficial for prevention treatment of cold sores. So again, check that out. It's funny. I don't remember what it actually uh, came up with. Uh, Rachel says high calcium score, high cholesterol and walnuts. What do I think about this? Um, uh, well, uh, oh, I'm actually going to talk about calcium score, um, calcium scoring in my, uh, my October 14th webinar, um, whether people should get calcium imaging, uh, kind of the pros and cons. Um, uh, so, but, uh, so yeah, this is somebody with, with, a uh, it sounds like, a, a, an atherosclerotic load with high cholesterol. And that means you need to lower your cholesterol by all means necessary. And one way to do that is by eating nuts. So I think walnuts would be an excellent choice, um, in the context of a whole food plant-based diet. Jake, the snake as a 41 year old male vegan last seven months, high iron and estrogen levels. Could this be eating too much temperature tempeh? I don't know. Um, um, High iron estrogen levels. Um, so uh, it'd be interesting to me in terms of high iron, how high iron, how do they measure your iron? There's lots of different iron measures, um, uh, but uh, certainly uh, having excess iron in your system um, uh, uh, is not good based on a, a, what we know from a disease called hemochromatosis, um, which is kind of a pathological condition of iron overload and cause all sorts of problems. So that's not a good idea. Um, and in terms of estrogen levels, um, there are, there's certainly normal levels of both male and female hormones in both men and women. Um, and, uh, and, uh, um, probably the, the number one, uh, cause of high, um, uh, uh female steroid hormones in men is obesity, having excess abdominal fat. Jesse, please help advice on nutrient vegetable intake for gastroparesis, brain tumor, to seizures, to gastroparesis. So it sounds like this is uh, seizure-induced gastroparesis. Um, uh, that is, uh, that I do not know. Um, so I, I'm trying to think, so as always, we try to treat the cause, right? So I'm, I, I, I'm, uh, I'm not familiar with the relationship between seizures and gastroparesis, why seizures would lead to gastroparesis, and therefore what you could do. Um, gastroparesis is kind of slowing down the gastrointestinal tract. That's a good question. Ask your GI doc. I do not know the answer to that. Uh, Luna sends her love, his or her love. Um, watched my videos on B12. Okay, please talk about the types and which ones recommend the smokers. Okay. Um, so there's multiple types of, uh, of, uh, of vitamin B12. I recommend cyanocobalamin. Why? Because it's the most shelf stable. We have the best research um, supporting its use um, uh, for reversing B12 deficiency. Um, and uh, there was some controversy of whether or not smokers 
should choose a different type. Um, and so I think I have an earlier video suggesting smokers um, choose a different type. But I think in my latest series, um, with a deeper dive into the latest research, I don't think I... Um, um, you'd have to you'd have to check out the B12 webinar. Um, but in my memory, I was surprised that it was kind of a reversal. Oh, maybe smokers can take cyanocobalamin after all. That's what I remember. But I would check that out. Um, the most important thing smokers can take is smoking cessation classes. Um, not necessarily a class, but uh, stopping smoking would be the, the most important thing you can do for your health. All right, what else do we have? Um, oh, um, Volha. I uh, asked, uh, what are chronic hives, urticaria? What particular pants would I recommend? So I do have videos on chronic urticaria. Um, I wonder if that's, I forget if that's uh, in relationship to my uh, Lone Star tick-borne meat allergy. I think I seem to remember a chronic urticaria there. Um, uh, but so there's a whole bunch of different causes. And I have videos on treating a few of those causes, though it may not be um, relevant in your case. Um, uh, oh, we did that, Luna. Tara speaks. And what does Tara say? Intermittent fasting and autoimmune diseases. Oh, well, did you see? So I just had autoimmune disease video come up yesterday. Uh, Anti-inflammatory diet for lupus. Um, uh, that wasn't on intermittent fasting, but I do have, um, I do have a series. Oh yeah. I have a fasting webinar, um, where I talked about all the fasting research on autoimmune diseases. Although I think it was only water only fasting data. showing these remarkable, um, improvements in autoimmune diseases, um, like rheumatoid arthritis with um, fasting, but I believe it was either modified fasting or water-only fasting, not intermittent fasting. And whether or not intermittent fasting would help with inflammatory conditions, I don't know of any data either way. Um, and I looked at all the intermittent fasting data for the uh, How Not to Diet book. Speaking of the How Not to Diet book, I have a new cookbook coming out, How Not to Diet cookbook this December. Um, uh, so... Um, uh, pre -order, you can pre-order now, get it for everyone on your holiday wish list. I'm really excited about it. Um, and all proceeds, of course, from all my books are all donated to charity. All right, let's see what else we have in the last few moments we have together. Oh, I'm sorry, Tara, for making you dizzy or seasick. I'm just, I'm on my treadmill and trying to, trying to not be sedentary all day since I have uh, eight hours of interviews today. So might as well move around, but I apologize. So maybe take some ginger before my Q&As, help with the motion sickness. I don't know. All right, um, let me uh, switch on over here. I want to remind everybody, dun, 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 40 days till the election. Go to vote.org. If you're not sure, you think you're registered, not sure, you can check to see if you are registered to vote. And if you find out, wait a second, I'm actually not registered to vote, boom, you can do it right there um, because some of the early voting, uh, some of the voting uh, registration deadlines are actually coming up in the next few weeks in some states. Um, but uh, I think 40 states, you can actually register right online. You can do that through vote.org. All right, uh, what else will I remind people of? Um, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, um, uh, if you don't want to miss any of our new videos, just click on the little bell icon on the bottom right uh, below this video. I'll just take that word for it, that that's actually where it is. Um, uh, you can follow us on Instagram. You can subscribe. That's how people found out about my new webinar this morning when they got an email because they were subscribed to um, our free newsletter at nutritionfacts.org slash subscribe. If you're watching this on Facebook right now, you know where the Facebook page is. If you're not, then that's where you can find us. You can all follow us on Twitter, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Dun, 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 dun. Enjoy, everybody. I'm looking forward to coming back. A q and is next month with Brenda Davis, um, uh, one of the most amazing dietitians on the planet. I'm so excited she agreed to be on with me. And the regular Q&A like we're doing now. And those will be announced in the free newsletter as well. 
so wonderful to see everybody, not really see everybody, but interact with everybody. Um, have a wonderful week. Stay safe.